Uh, the next speaker is um, Smokey Stanton, who received his um, master's degree in social work from uh, West Virginia University and holds a professional certificate in environmental management from George Washington University. Uh, before establishing his nationwide consulting practice, Insight Solutions, he served in executive positions in uh, public health uh, at the local, state, and national levels. He's a fourth generation um, uh, native of Garrett County and resides in Oakland. And he's going to talk mainly about impacts on water, I believe. Smokey? And thanks to you all for taking time on a Saturday morning to come and listen to to these presentations. It really is uh, appreciated. In, in my brief time with you, I'm going to cover a lot of ground. Um, I'm not going to read PowerPoint slides to you, but a picture is worth a thousand words and hopping into that pool. Thanks to Bob Carney, a photographer locally, uh, that's this picture. It is not to say the lake is beautiful. Rather, the point of the slide is to say that Deep Creek Lake is basically a basin located at the foot of mountains and ridges. And while most of us are familiar with riding around or looking at the lake, I wanted to draw your attention to the fact that it is in fact a bowl, B-O-W-L, and that whatever is at the top of those hills and ridges eventually is going to make its way into either the streams downstream or the lake proper. This is the television ad. All of us have seen it. It's very pretty. It's clean. It's got remarkably good practices, such as the fence around it. The uh, equipment that's showing is pretty sparse. But all in all, it's a very, very attractive portrayal of Marcellus gas drilling. There is the reality. It's not the one you're going to see on television, not the one you're going to see on expensively produced brochures. And I'm just going to draw your attention to a couple of items on here. This is the drilling rig, chemicals, storage areas, and what are called man camps. Now, I didn't think that, that we would ever have man camps in Garrett County, but it turns out that we do. Right over across the West Virginia line, there are man camps, and the companies have been very nice to be able to provide housing and sleeping and toilets and things for their workers. Maybe it has something to do with making sure that they're at work the next morning and that they know where they are, and that this is pretty much isolated from public view. A little bit different shot. Again, it's different than the television ad. It is a little hyped up just in the sense that it shows how concentrated and how dirty the industrial process is. Done right, there's not maybe a problem. The problem is that in Maryland with, with not much regulation or local ordinances, there's nothing to say that that would not be the way that the work was done. Best practices. This is one that, that I suggest is not a really good practice. The, uh, it's cheap, it's effective. What's in that uh, pond is what's called the flowback water. And it's held until it reaches a certain level or a certain concentration when it's pumped out, put into trucks, and then hauled over to someplace else to get rid of it. The membrane is plastic sheeting. It's very thick, it does tear. It can rupture, it can let the, uh, the stuff in the pond down into the ground and so on and so forth. <clears throat> the best practices that Bridget mentioned, I'm just trying to raise a question, I'm not going to answer it for you, you have to answer that. This is one best practice. Another best practice would be to contain that fluid in an enclosed metal container so that it doesn't off gas, so that the chances of it breaking and linking are minimized. But we need to have regulations in place to determine whether or not a best practice is optional or if it's required. Again, very briefly, the, uh, the context of, of my presentation to you is to say, okay, here are the things that, that we need to be concerned about when it comes to water. 
environmentalists say that there are five different categories of things called media. It's not the newspaper or television. It's the, uh, the media in which the, uh, the process occurs. Air, sediments, water, and a couple of others. This points up the, uh, the interrelationship of those four or five. Up on the top left, is where one of those ponds has failed to give you a sense of size. That's about 30 feet across. The uh, culvert here is about three to five feet across. And that's where the stuff that was flowing out of the catch basin was captured in order to prevent it from flowing on down. The question is, should that kind of thing be allowed? And what is the public policy going to be in order to prevent that or to describe it? Maryland has a very good water appropriations permitting process. The, the question is, under what circumstances, how often, how much can water be drawn from any public waterway? The, uh, this shows the, the pump, this shows the lines that are drawing water from, uh, from whatever the source may be. And it's not unheard of if you have a guy from out in the west who drives a truck in to pick up water. His job is to pick up water. He will drop his pipe wherever it is that he can get that and not get into trouble. The water appropriations permit by the state of Maryland is intended to restrict, to put controls on that kind of behavior. Gathering lines, it's not just a pretty little pipe that pops up now and again so that it can be accessed. This is what the gathering line may look like. That's not particularly a big one, and neither is it a small one. But the amount of grading, the sediment control, erosion control should be taken into consideration once the industrial process is completed. The flaring occurs two times. It may occur right after the drilling in order to get rid of the impurities to make it better to put into the pipeline to get it over to our stoves and to our heaters. But it also occurs during the, uh, the delivery process to flare off impurities and to make sure that as the gas is transmitted that it is the kind of thing that we want to purchase. The neighborhood. Most of you know this, I'm just going to point it out. On the left, the Occoghany River watershed comprises about two-thirds of the county. The Savage River watershed to the right, about one-third. The Deep Creek watershed sits just about in the middle, on the downside, headed toward the Mississippi, not toward the, uh, the Chesapeake Bay. But you need to know that this, Eastern Continental Divide, that water, in fact, does go to the, uh, to the Chesapeake Bay. Those are the, that's the context into which baseline water quality monitoring fits. I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. There are two pictures here. This one is the methane well gas study. The state of Maryland is doing a methane well gas study this summer. You can't really see it very well, but there are circles on there that indicate that there are about 10 to 15 additional sites needed in Garrett County to be able to do an adequate methane well baseline study. It's going on now. They do need more. If you've got questions about that, please see me sometime during the, during the morning and I'll point you to the, uh, to the person that can do it. Streams and rivers. This is a very important slide in terms of establishing baselines. Baseline meaning what is the water quality today? And if there is drilling, how can we tell that something changed? And if it did, what changed? Right now, this shows the leased land maps, similar to what you saw earlier. Little blue lines are the streams and tributaries. And the red dots are where there are continuous monitors that have been placed by the state of Maryland. In addition to those monitors, there are 70 different sites that have been identified for monitoring by volunteers to supplement the continuous monitoring in order to be able to get that baseline set. To the, uh, to the Deep Creek Lake itself, 
Friends of Deep Creek Lake has five or six sites that it is monitoring in order to get that baseline information. Uh, the way that we went about it is very different from, some, from any other state, really. No other state really has this intensive and concentrated, and it's relative, identification of what the baseline is. In order to do that right, we exploited, we used several processes. Remember, I'm from here, I'm not defending the state, it's just this is the way that it should have been done. <clears throat> we married the volunteer program to the Maryland Biological Stream Survey process and its program. That way there was an established structure for volunteers to do their work and to report in to make sure that chains of custody and stuff was done cr properly and was consistent, reliable, and so on and so forth. The process that we used was the, are using, is the alarm protocol. To be very candid with you, we kind of shifted the alarm protocol a little bit. The alarm protocol was originally intended to pick up incidents of spills and pollution. We modified that just a little bit to be able to do the baseline information and in that process, pick up a process that can identify incidents that we already have the trained volunteers, we've already got the equipment and things out there. The sites were selected by DNR scientists. It, it the program monitors for temperature, acid base, sodium, TDS or total dissolved solids, conductivity and some selected chemicals. GPS and coordinates were provided to the teams in order to assure that where the monitoring is being done is consistent uh, with the sites as well as with the protocols. And then the reports are collected and the instruments recalibrated every several weeks down at the, uh, well down at, over at the Deep Creek Lake State Park. Won't spend any time on this. What does those things look like that all these people are running around doing? It looks like that. The kit is on the left. The actual detector is on the right. What I want to do now is to uh, not step on anybody, but the picture on the left is the drilling rig that, that was at the Grimm property just about three miles from Oakland. I took that a year ago. It looks much like the second slide that I show you. It does not look like the television ad one. That is it. And that was taken almost a year ago in, uh, in late September. You can tell by the trees. The two pictures on the right, I took Monday, one year later. You can't get on the property. The guy didn't like me being there. Uh, I moved to let the pickup truck through that's on the bottom right. <clears throat> It is an industrial process. True, the drilling pad that you see now is a flat green area that has been cleaned up. But the process continues. All of which is to say, we don't need to be risk averse. We do need to manage the risk. There is a point there where we say the risk is too great, we don't want it, or under these conditions we want the risk.